Hey guys, TikTok Sully here, or just Sully, back with another video, and welcome to another episode of What Happened in Fashion and Street Style. In this episode, we'll be looking at what happened in July and highlighting the noteworthy moments and releases that took place. I just wanted to say sorry for uploading this video late. I had some family over at the beginning of the month, so I was busy with that. Then I caught a cold for a few days after that. But it's here now, so let's get straight into it, and hope you guys enjoy. Kicking it off, July was a fairly average month, but there was a fair few releases that took place, with the biggest being the Fall Winter 18 collection. Yes, in July, a lot of retailers got their Fall Winter 18 stock after it had been previewed earlier in the year, and normally it is about a six months wait time before the stuff becomes available, so July was right on time. There were some highlighted pieces from various brands, such as Vetmon, Ralph Simmons' Christian F collection, which featured two of the main characters from the film on them, being Christian and Detlev, and also his drugs pieces, which were inspired by the self tire play and intertwined really well into his Fall Winter collection. There was also Chris Van Nash's final pieces for Dior, Kim Jones's final collection for Louis Vuitton and also Gucci who presented a very modern collection that has been awaited since showing on the runway which brings me to my next point for the month of July. Since the majority of brands dropped their Fall Winter collections in July, so did Gucci and they presented an all-American collection by collaborating with the MLB to bring some baseball branded pieces to the brand. A highlight of this collection was their headwear. Gucci finally dropped their New York Yankees baseball caps with the butterfly embroidery on the side to make for a high interpretation of the classic New York caps. And this was instantly hot with a lot of consumers buying them as soon as they became available to rock for the rest of the summer and the coming fall too. Another highlight for Gucci in July was their Dapper Dan collection. This also finally dropped and encapsulated New York's 90s aesthetic really well to make for a well-timed and long overdue collaboration between Dapper Dan and Gucci. Men's New York Fashion Week also took place and showcased some independent brands to July 9th to the 11th and one specific show that really stood out was the Beast Destroy show. This brand has been making noise in streetwear culture for a little while now and for New York Fashion Week they presented their fourth collection and the show didn't really get much coverage so I thought I would at least cover it. Even though it was a small show it was a big step for the independent streetwear label as they continue to penetrate into the fashion calendar whilst remaining independent and if you want to see all the rest of the looks I'll be sure to leave a link down below in the description. Moving on to an established brand now we come to Burberry and their new creative director Ricardo Tishi. As in July he began his revamp of the heritage brand by introducing a new logo to the brand as well as a new monogram. And that wasn't it, he also went on to announce a new release strategy for the brand by releasing the brand's future collection in more smaller and frequent deliveries as opposed to all at one time, as well as throwing some extra capsule collections into the mix for the foreseeable future. This was implemented in an attempt to keep the brand new and refreshing for this modern demographic. As far as the new logo and monogram are concerned though, this is also in an attempt to renew the brand, as the logo made a change from its old serif font to a new bolder sans serif font, which definitely looks more modern and has actually taken me some time to get used to due to how long the old logo was representative of the British brand. But I definitely think this is a push in the right direction and I love both the new logo and the monogram and it only leaves us looking more forward to Ricardo's first collection for Burberry which will debut in September. Matthew Williams dropped his collaboration with Nike in July which featured his conventional technical wear mixed with Nike's research of sports and garments to make for some very calculated technical wear. There was a jacket that released, a bali, tights, some printed t-shirts for men and then there was also a women's collection to provide everyone with his pieces similarly as to what he does at Alix. Another brand Calvin Klein added another diffusion line to their brand being Calvin Klein established 1978 and this decision was made by their current creative director Ralph Simmons. After Ralph Simmons had already introduced the Calvin Klein 205 W39 NYC diffusion he decided to add another line which would this time be more youth orientated and play with graphics whilst encapsulating Calvin Klein's heritage. Heritage. After this news was announced, Calvin Klein had already readied up their first job for the D-Fusion and released some graphic prints on model book shields as she posed for Calvin Klein back in the day as well as some other heritage pieces. It's still early to make a complete judgement on the brand so we'll just wait and see what it has in store as it moves forward. Helly Hansen attempted to sue Off-White as they claimed that the popular streetwear label were infringing on their diagonal stripe design and didn't appreciate the brand choice of placement of the design either. The Helly Hansen brand claimed that the diagonal stripes on the sleeve have been 
been a trademark of theirs for over 40 years now and quite frankly they didn't appreciate off white producing something that looked remotely like it i say remotely because when you compare the two it's not really the same and when you take a step back you can see that off white's use of the diagonal lines are completely different to how heli hansen use it so i feel like this won't work out in their favor but we'll just wait and see what happens and how strict the trademark guidelines really are coming to collaborations now junior watanabe presented another collaboration with the north face as well as carry more for his fall winter 18 drop and this was the successor to the spring summer 18 collaboration this time it was a hybrid concept on three jackets with technical hardware and a built-in backpack on all three iterations to make for yet another functional and aesthetically pleasing collaboration ralph simmons and fred perry also celebrated their 10th anniversary of their ongoing collaboration which is a long time to collaborate with one particular brand so it must be a great fit and the brand celebrated by releasing 100 garments from their archive around the world at different fred perry locations this is still ongoing and will run until about mid-august where fred perry will drop their fall winter 18 collection so this is just something to hold their core following down for the time being and bape also had a collaboration in july this time with adidas originals and adi color to release some track shoes and t-shirts in the iconic camo and colors there was a green camo red camo blue and also a black camo that came from this release which i'm sure fans of bape found appealing and the only thing that was missing was a pair of sneakers to go with it on july 21st japanese brand visbim opened up another us flagship entitled visbim exposition and it's located in los angeles marking their second flagship outside of japan with the first being in the new mexico state the brand has definitely gained international success over the years and it's another brand coming out of japan that is respected for its craftsmanship on this side of the world much like capital or needles so another flagship seemed appropriate and the brand designer hiroki nakamura Moore's current place of residence being Los Angeles seemed to be the appropriate spot that they landed on. Hiroki also launched a new diffusion line to go with the store opening entitled Contrary Department and this will be a line concentrating on clothing with a function. Hiroki will be taking classical garments that were designed for workwear, military wear or outdoor wear for example and reinterpreting them into modern garments through his own lens whilst keeping their functionality. So you can keep an eye out for that as the diffusion unfolds. And the last thing I want to cover in the month of July comes from independent UK brand cloth surgeon as they went on to create a custom burberry jacket made out of a handful of authentic burberry scarves to make for one of the best rebuilt pieces that i've seen and the images to go with it that were shot outside of a burberry store just added to the overall project's brilliance if you take a look at the one of one garment you can see the detail that went into it with the burberry pattern lining up as each scarf was joined together and even the original tassels hanging off the bottom of the jacket for added detail to make for a solid reconstructed jacket that if you didn't know came out of cloth surgeon would think it was an official Burberry piece due to its craftsmanship and classic collared jacket look. The jacket was a one of one project and sold on their website at a retail of £1,250. Cloth Surgeon are an independent brand coming out of London and often make one of one pieces like this and I wanted to make mention of the Burberry project as it was one of my favourites to come out of the brand and felt it deserved the coverage. Cloth Surgeon also produced their own garments that has the same craftsmanship over on their website so I'll be sure to leave a link down below if you were interested in checking that out as well as their previous projects. Moving on to sneaker releases now, there were some great releases in July and some that are just simply worth mentioning. So let's get into them and see which ones you are more drawn towards throughout the month. Kicking it off, we start with Don C's Air Jordan Legacy 312s, which were teased a few months back and finally kicked off with this release. Starting with the white, black and blue colorway, as well as the green, ghost and white colorway with another three set to release in August. The Legacy 312 is a very unique shoe in the sense that it takes inspiration from a bunch of classic Nike silhouettes such as the Jordan 1 and and then even the Nike Alpha Force for the added toe strap. It's finished with the Don C branding on the tongue, but considering how unique the shoe is, it doesn't need any branding to show that it's a Don C production. Don C has always been a Jordan head and Nike fan, so for him to have a chance to collaborate with Nike on a pair of Jordans, paying homage to some OG silhouettes wasn't a too far-fetched idea for the creative. Don C's friend Virgil Abloh also had a collaboration with Nike in July, this time in producing a blacked out Presto to add to his off-white collaborations that of course had crazy hype after being yet another addition to the Nike and Off-White collaborations. And Kanye West, a friend of both Don C and Virgil Abloh, also released a sneaker. Similarly to Virgil, he took a blacked out approach and released the Yeezy 500 silhouette in a blacked out suede for his Yeezy brand in partnership with Adidas. This was one of my favorite colorways in the Yeezy 500 model and I was close to picking them up but I decided to let it slide at the last minute. But if I still wanted them bad enough in the future, they don't have much resale and I sell it for close to their £170 retail price so I'm sure I 
could pick them up if I wanted to. Coming back to Jordan talk now, Vogue magazine also had a collaboration with Nike, this time on a Jordan 1 model for women, which was very unexpected and even had the Anna Winter co-sign. A few years ago, if you imagine Nike and Vogue to be collaborating on a Jordan, it'd be very hard to believe. But with the current fashion climate, it's nice to see that such an established and respected magazine is open to this new wave of fashion. And not to mention Anna Winter too, who has been present in fashion as far as someone like me can remember. The two brands produced a zip up Jordan 1 in two colorways and it was finished up with Anna Winter's signature on the bottom spelling out AWOC, which is the signature she uses to sign up on Vogue stuff at our office and the AWOC stands for Anna Winter OK. Of course this was a women's sneaker as I don't think it would have been very appealing to a male audience and the two brands also have a Jordan 3 coming which is set to release in September so you can look forward to that if you are a fan of this collaboration. Nike also collaborated with Dutch artist Power to produce two iterations of classic Nike silhouettes being the Air Max 1 and the Nike Zoom Spiridon. This collaboration took Power's art style and colour palette, applied them to the Dutch countryside and then imagined it onto the Nike silhouettes. I thought the artwork and colours worked really well on a white canvas and this collaboration had a little bit of hype ending up in a sellout for the artist. So this is another collaboration that is now only available on the aftermarket with the Air Max 1 seeming to be the more popular model. Converse and JW Anderson released their second collaboration on the Converse silhouettes. There were a few models that were released but the one I want to highlight with the grid collection which was an interpretation of the classic Chuck Taylor as previously done on the first collaboration. This time the approach was a bit calmer and the JW Anderson brand went with a simple grid branding that covered the sneaker and released in three colorways being a red, black and a white. If you were a fan of the classic Chuck Taylors then wearing the JW Anderson interpretation wouldn't be too eccentric as it's clean and calm like the originals. The sneakers retailed for £90 or $120 and they're still available over on Converse's website so I'll be sure to link that down below in case you were interested. The opposing sportswear brand Adidas also released a somewhat trendy sneaker for their brand entitled the Sobokov. This was a football shoe that was also designed to have streetwear appeal so if you are a fan of that sportswear aesthetic then this was a sneaker that Adidas produced to help fuel that look. Adidas has collaborated with other brands like Gosha who also produce looks for football culture so this is just a sneaker counterpart that I feel would work well with some of those Gosha pieces and other sportswear items like football jerseys that are also somewhat trendy and street style. These released in both a white gum and a black gum colour which is still available over on Adidas so check the description for that. Adidas also released a collaboration with Ralph Simmons on their replicant Oswego model in celebration of Belgian National Day. This time the cutout sneaker took the Belgian colours and applied it to the chunky silhouette and much like the first releases of this updated model they came with a pair of matching socks to make up for the cutouts and to give off the illusion of a complete sneaker. These were seen to be an exclusive but with the amount of Oswegos that have been releasing since its inception in 2013, the sneaker has definitely been played out so these are still available from retailers. Mason Margiela also released a new colorway for the classic replica low silhouette, this time dubbed the Lever Message model. The brand had already released the Lever Message model which featured the words written across the side but in the second adaptation the brand decided to take it up a notch in minimalism and produced a completely white canvas with the classic gum sole and provided the marker pen with the sneaker for the consumer to customise and leaving their own personal message. Bape attempted to go back to their original designs for this summer and released some Babester footwear in three original colorways from the early 2000s. The Babesters are Babes takes on the Nike Air Force One model and they're often made up of patterned leather which these three colorways were. They dropped in an original red, blue and white pink, yellow and baby blue and finally a green, blue and yellow to make for some very colourful sneakers that we would have all been excited about just 10 years ago. But I guess Bape believed that they would still have appeal in 2018 and went ahead with the re-edition which dropped on the Bape website. I definitely still like Bape's in 2018 but this release of colours wasn't really appealing to me. And to finish up this episode we come to an affordable and casual sneaker from none other than casual fashion favourite brand Vans as they released a new low top silhouette to help generate some more income to the brand after the old school model has pretty much been set in stone as the universal low top silhouette for both fashion lovers and skaters. This time they released a Vans Vault Epoch model which still works with the great low silhouette that Vans do so well and features a V-like branding on the side finished with a suede upper and a canvas sole. So if you were looking for a new affordable low top but are tired of the old schools then this might be a good choice to go with while still sticking to the brand's footwear. I especially like the black colorway and I'm not a fan of the other colors so if I could recommend one it would probably be that as it looks very versatile just like the old schools and that brings me to the end of this episode and the end of what happened in fashion and street style in the month of July. Let me know down below what you thought about this month and if you liked any specific products and hopefully next month will be even more exciting. But that's 
all from me today hope you guys enjoyed if you did don't forget to hit that like button it always helps and is much appreciated and if you're new here and you're interested in fashion then you should also subscribe by clicking down over here as i have some more videos like this on the way and it'll just allow you to stay up to date with the uploads and i also have a playlist for new music over here so if you're interested in that you can check out this playlist for all the latest music videos all in the one playlist but that's all from me today Thanks for watching, hope you guys enjoyed and I'll catch you in the next one.